Well, here we are. This is Thames Head. A stone that is barely legible. That records the fact that it is the start of the River Thames. But nothing really to show for it. Those stones down there mark a spring. But this spring only ever has water gushing from it during the wettest of winter months. During the summer, very rarely, except after heavy thunderstorms, we see water coming from this spring, which is rather disappointing because last night there was a lot of heavy thunderstorms. But anyway, it seems as though I am going to be disappointed and it is now time to continue on our journey. The very first bridge over the River Thames is near the village of Kemble and it's on the road Kemble to Sirencester and basically the infant Thames flows through here with these reed bushes a bit of swampy ground now you can see the line of the Thames there Sadly no water flowing at the moment but there's the line of the Thames and it just follows this line and goes under this bridge. Which so after Ewan the Cotswold Water Park is reached, probably the largest man-made park, water park in Europe I believe it is. But the, the walking is surprisingly uninteresting, banks of trees prevent you seeing either the water, the lakes on one side, and there's hundreds of lakes, or the Thames on the other side. Uh, yesterday and the day before, very heavy thunder showers. In fact, last night, it just rained torrentially on and off for about eight hours. Uh, it certainly made sure that the path is quite muddy. Very muddy, in fact, very waterlogged. But it also means that the Thames is flowing quite fast along its floodplain. And here you get a sign of what I mean. You've got the Thames there. Just see it glistening there. That's the River Thames. And if we pan round, you've now got one of the lakes that make up the water park. And this is Thamesmead Park. Private, keep out, you'll be shot at dawn if you dare encroach upon the hallowed ground. I am slipping and sliding and as you can see nothing really to look at. It's just an avenue of trees and I've been trudging along like this for well over five miles now. Uh, really nothing very much to look at. Life in your hands time now. Uh, the public bride away as you can see here adjoins National Route 45 on the National Cycle Network. So here we go, good chance to get knocked over by a few grims. My hand diving into some trees. I got caught on a thorn. Uh, so blood trickling all over the place. But this is the uh, North Meadow National Nature Reserve. Oh, bloody, and there's a Thames behind it. Just in case you didn't see it, that's the whole purpose of us walking here. Point telling us that the Thames barrier is 172 miles away and it's 12 miles to the source and the red lion is awaiting in Cricklade. Hello red lion I'm on my way. So here we go Cricklade Bridge. Ye old Cricklade Bridge. Thames Pass continues that way. Look at where the Thames Path goes. There's the Thames Path. There's the Thames anyway, I don't know where the Thames Path goes. And there's the Swan. Just up past that building. I haven't got a zoom on this, so I can't show it to you. That's my first bit of wildlife I've seen on the River Thames. There we go. The first town, the first wildlife, the first pub and the first camper parked up there. So we're now leaving Cricklade. There's a plaque here, I must read what the plaque says. The main road. Oh hello nice dog. There's my friend. My doggy friend. This 
going to read what this plaque says. Einspern Bridge crossing the, uh, the Thames. Looks like we're going to be going over that. Danger. Oh, what's the danger, Mr. Danger Man? Danger, no fishing. Ah, I'm not here to go fishing. I'm here to go walk. Footbridge over the Thames. This is about a mile from Cricklade, going towards Letchlade. Very nice footbridge. Very nice day. As you can see from that field over there, very flooded. Well, good morning, everybody. I started the day in quite self-congratulatory mode, having finished well east of Cricklade to what I intended last night. So, oh, super fit, Jen, despite all the mud and everything. Done really well. Set off this morning, drove to a car park near to my finishing point, walked to the finishing point. Then I reached a village called Carsleeton, which I was really go wanting to take a video of because it's got red line pub and all sorts of other things uh, all that stretch is on road it's only a narrow road it's a village road but today was idiots day out tearing along so the last thing i was going to do was walk along looking at a camera so terribly sorry no videos of castle eaton i then got to the Inglesham Road which you are warned in all the guidebooks to avoid like the plague it's 60 miles an hour very narrow grass verge some sharp bends uh, I had no idea how I was going to get around that when all my prayers were answered and along come a bus so I've now got off there and I'm walking now towards Letchley well thankfully uh, start again thankfully I'm off that last track I was on the mud was incredibly deep I am only walking in an old pair of running shoes I decided boots would be overkill and my wet feet mud-stained socks are telling me no Jen it would not have been overkill anyway I'm now on a nice made track I suppose about a mile from Letchley is still no sign of the Thames. I appear to have diverted onto the wrong path, but looking at the map, I've probably got a better path, even if it's slightly longer. Joy of joy! I'm now on a made up road. I think I've not got more than a mile to go. I keep saying that, don't I? I've been saying I've got more than a mile to go for the last three miles. Another not very clear sign. There is no sign for the Thames path here. Apparently I've been meandering along the Thames and Seven Way. Now there is a public footpath sign going to my right. Do I go to the right or do I go to the left? There we go. There we go. Looks like some, at least this path is free of that dreaded mud that I've had for the last couple of miles and to say it found it quite spooky very on my own never heard anything saw anybody trees all either side a very fairly steep steps not for the aged like me oh goodness and a very swollen thames oh knock some ducks a bit of wildlife at last i'm gonna pan round towards Letchlade. And look what's in the distance. Boats. Hello. Come on in boats. Now there's a path that side, a path this side. There's a signpost down there. Let's see where I am now. Well, it appears I'm reunited with the Thames path. I added about two miles to my journey by diverting off the Cotswold, Thames and Cotswold way. And now we're coming to lots of boats. This really is a wide river, even given that it's in flood. It's amazing how, in the space of about five miles, 
it's gone from a rather placid lethargic stream to what you would now call a river well another supreme moment of self-congratulation at my wisdom of choosing to walk in an old pair of running shoes yes I can't walk on water I'm gonna to have to splash through it more width now coming into Lechlade uh, the path goes straight on there's a town bridge and there's the Thames by now a broad wide river and there's the Riverside pub very very nice pub for those who like pubs and there's the church behind I'm not going to go into uh, Lechlade the path crosses underneath the uh, the road here but uh, well it looks like I might go over it but for those who've not been to Lechlade it's well worth a visit it's a lovely little town equidistant between Sirencester and Oxford and always worth a visit and here we've got Riverside Park picture of old father Thames at St John's Lock which we will go past because from now on it's a navigable river 